Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgam Ash, and I'm ready to dev think, as Mr. Wolf puts it, my way through another set of challenges in bringing my concepts into one cohesive whole that becomes a playable game. We're going to see if we can do that this episode. I am Amalgam Ash, and this is me creating my Unis Honest fan game. It doesn't look like a fan game yet. I haven't replaced any of the assets, the, the mechanics, the system. That's more important right now by far. And it's important because I know that I can do it before the time is up. The game jam ends in just a few short weeks. So with me being only able to work on stuff on the weekends, I need to get this going right away. Stars are my save point in my text file. They tell me what I was doing before I stopped last time. Let's pick up where I left off and go add a new timer in common events Do I want. I didn't get a chance to edit that document anymore. I will need to kind of think on the fly. And what I think I'm gonna have to do is can I have a fifth option? Let's see if I can, right? Let's see if I can have a fifth and let's add a sixth. Let's add a sixth, let's do that. I can't add any more. So six is my limit. So six is my hard limit. That's actually fine. That makes things more interesting. Extra or missing object anomaly is one category. Moving object entity or intruder painting uh, I can have camera anomaly be one I actually I actually only want to do this if they'll all be on the screen at the same time um, call it a personal choice let's play test now that we've added our other options I can't remember I cannot remember. Ah, crap. I thought I figured this out. I cannot remember myself how many options show up on the screen at the same time. Oh, I did. I did figure this out. Uh, we want to change this. This event start from synchronized and repeated to uh, one time only it's it's going to be called every single time the key except is set to two because these conditions on the left are checked every every chance the engine gets every cycle of runtime those conditions get checked if they're true or not true doesn't matter if the event runs or doesn't run doesn't matter those conditions are being checked every single faster than a second probably more like 6,000 times a second. Um, let's play test now that I've done that. I think that's all I had to do. That was the problem I was running into with the, with the, uh, with the play test in the last video. And I knew it was gonna be something stupid simple. There it is. They all show up on the screen at once? I had no idea, that's amazing. That is great. That means I don't have to have okay I don't have to have that lead-in screen I don't I didn't want that anyway you know let's let's copy that and let's paste it outside of that branch and then let's delete the branch because I don't need it I now know don't need it I can have um cancel be a part of the actual menu that you call up. The whole reason that I called up a menu before that was to save a space on the initial menu, the, the options of which anomaly you were actually addressing. Anomaly. Painting or screen anomaly, camera anomaly. Should make sense. 
I hope that does make sense. So this branch is done by default because it's the cancel branch, this one at the very end here on the very right. Um, for those of you just tuning kind of into this part of things, when you create a display selection event in SGB, you can specify a number of selections and you can run custom event panels or series of event panels in each branch. When nothing happens, it just follows this nice little visual flowchart and it goes into the end branching and then it can go into other event panels. But right here, I want five different options for my menu. You, you may have seen me trying to call up a menu, but um, as this game is being created, modeled after the I'm on observation duty series of games, the menu here is very, very important. I could do a much bigger menu. I could actually design my own heads up display and have all these options. I'd have to keep track of a cursor and things like that though. I don't want to do that. This is for a jam. So for now, we're just going to do these six options. And I really like having the cancel button here with these other five options. But when cancel is selected, nothing happens. Maybe I should test that. Uh, but I think what we're going to have to do now is we have to marry the button events that I have used for my testing grounds with the camera and the menu system in the camera. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I've made prototypes here for that purpose. Let's step on some buttons. That starts the timer. And see what happens. Okay, so that's an anomaly. And that is... Those buttons fix the anomalies as they happen. It's been too long. It's for you. It's been uh, well. It's it's probably been about the same amount of time because I'm only able to release these videos once every whoops. I'm only able to work on this stuff once a week. Play test it again. I, I really borked it up. That's my two anomalies at a time button. And the yellow buttons fix them. And I don't know what the red button does. I can't remember. And that specifies a camera, which we don't need anymore because we know that we can do that. We can get rid of that. This one starts the timer. This spawns one anomaly. This spawns two anomalies. What does the red button do? I cannot remember. I could have actually probably just looked at my notes too, huh? Let's let's do that instead. I've got notes, right? No. Oh, it's my anomaly reset. Well, let's go ahead and put the note here. Why didn't I put the note there before? This button resets all of the anomalies and enables them to spawn again. Right? That's what we want to put. Each of these fixes, this spawns one, this spawns two, this starts the timer, which spawns them automatically. Um, I think we're ready. So each of these buttons we're basically going to, it's, it's serendipitous that we have five buttons because these buttons are basically going to represent the five types of anomalies we have, right? Sort of. This, no, oh, I left myself a note. How great. It's awesome to leave yourself notes. We check the anomaly value first. If it's been activated, we deactivate it. This check must occur before active anomalies can decrement, otherwise the buttons can be used to cheat. Perfect. So I can copy the contents of this button and I can go into my other map and I can go into my, this right here. And I need to actually make myself a note really quick. This is the menu event includes 
fixing anomalies. Very, very important. This is the, the menu that's going to be used, the event rather, that's going to be used more than anything else. We can paste our event. No. Let's try that again. Oh, I see what I did. I just... I was a dinkus about it. All right. Bed settings and there we go. And paste. Excellent. Excellent. Now we have our first buttons code pasted here. That's what I want. And now I want to go into my menu here. You know what I'm going to do just to make this a little bit easier on myself, less key presses and all that. We're going to paste that right here. Highlight all this awesome stuff. Go here, event settings, paste it right there. That will fix the second event. Looks the same, is basically the same, but is pointing to the second event. I hope it's pretty obvious what I'm doing. I'm taking the code out of my buttons. I'm not taking it out. I'm actually just copying it. I'm going to leave the buttons there for the next person because this is all this map is going to stay in the project file for the next person. So whoever wants to download the project file in order to build off of this and make a game can do that. Whoops. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, that's Anomaly 3. Okay. I was looking at the, um, the switch numbers, which... Um, prefix the actual switch names that I set and that's that, it, everything's fine everything's fine I just need to pay attention and not panic we're gonna copy that and paste it here ladies and gentlemen we are almost able to test the actual anomaly fixing system and I'm pretty excited I did not think I was gonna get this far in this video I thought I was going to be hammering out some guesswork but it turns out I really took care of myself I really set myself up for success all right we're gonna cut this event out of here paste it uh, this one can get deleted and now what I want to do is I want to take these five events here and I want to copy them and I'm going to paste them onto this map. Hello, come into view, please. They're just bookshelves, right? But they already represent the core mechanic of what I want to do. So I'm going to put each one into a room. Not quite, not, not quite. Hold on. Each one's going to go into a room. But um, the it, it won't make much sense because there's no context associated with them. So they're five events, but they're not meant to be five of the same event happening across the different rooms. And I'm not trying to test just one of the menu options. I'm trying to test all five. So it, it really stands to reason that not only do they have to be in separate rooms, they're going to have to be separate contextual events as well. So. That said, let's take a quick look and remind ourselves what these things mean. Extra or missing object anomaly is event one. So this just appearing is event one. The default state, there's nothing here. The, the anomaly is off. We're going to change the graphic to nothing. If, if the event is on, the bookshelf will appear right I think that's what I want I think that's what I want and I think when main hero talks is a fine interaction because it, it's there's no code there there's no event panels so the second type of event which happens to be in the second room moving object anomaly okay <laughs> Check this out. So <laughs> in order to facilitate a moving object, um, anomaly two is on, anomaly two is off. I'm, I'm not remembering 
what the default state was. These all look like bookshelves, right? First. And then when they are anomalies, they, uh, no, they're barrels first. And then, okay, good, 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 good. They're barrels first, they turn into bookshelves. That's good. The bookshelf is the anomalous state while we are previewing. So the active state, I, I named these correctly. I had to trust myself. The active state, this is going to move around now. And um, it's gonna have the fastest movement speed. Very random movement pattern extremely great movement frequency all right by default nothing's gonna happen all right event settings what is anomaly number three that is an entity slash intruder so this guy when he's active he's going to be a, a character so let's find ourselves a ridiculous character, just a st stupid character, right? Oh, actually, no, we can't use that one. You're just going to be idle. You're just going to chill out. Love this so far. The next one, I neglected to look at the event settings. When painting or screen anomaly is selected. Oh, okay. So, this one, this is going to be a little bit different. Um, it needs to be a painting before it's anything else, first of all. Yeah, first we're going to select that as the default. If it changes, it's going to change to a green monster painting. Which, like, it doesn't matter that it's not, like, being creepy or moving around or anything. The fact of the matter is, you can sense that there is a mimic in the house. Alright, the last one. The last one. Is. Oh, there's only four. Oh, there's five. Camera. Camera anomaly. Camera anomaly. So... Actually don't like camera anomaly for what I'm doing because while I can put an event in that will put an image over the screen it should only do it while you're on the screen right yeah camera anomaly is not quite what I want to use because if I use camera anomaly and I put something on the screen there's going to be something on the screen no matter what camera you are switched to, and I don't quite like that. All right, so we're not going to call it extra or missing object anomaly. We're going to call it extra object anomaly. And then camera anomaly is going to become missing object anomaly. And I kind of I hate that it's down here. I would rather it be near its neighbor up there. But now, for the active state of this one, we're just going to remove. We're just going to remove it. I think I didn't do that for that one. I changed the object, so that's considered extra object. Right, although it should be more representative of something that's in the kitchen, but we're just testing, so we don't really care about that for now. Now I need to go grab my timer button and we're going to grab this right here. We're just going to copy the event panel here. Apparently I only had the one in the event settings here when, when the game is started. I think this might be the best place to put that particular event panel at the end of the game start. We won't put any notes until we've kind of made sure of this, and I'll need to make that the start point in order to play test this properly. Um, but if this works, this will give you an excellent view of 
how the actual game is going to go. So the timer has started and we're checking cameras and our barrel is still a barrel. There's nothing weird going on yet. That barrel is still a barrel. That book sh there's a goblin in here. There's a goblin. We have an, en an entity intruder anomaly and we have fixed it. The goblin has turned back into a barrel. Cancel works. We can see the painting. Now I'll need to move the uh, intruder slash goblin anomaly because, oh, we've got an extra object anomaly in the kitchen. There we go, we fixed that one. No problem there. Uh-huh, that's normal. All's good in the garden, all's good in the front yard. This kitchen one's not gonna come back. This one hasn't changed yet. Although, I think I'm not going to see any more changes. Because I think that's the game. I think that's that's all for the timer. Let's close that and take a look at the timer real quick. Um, the, uh, what is it? Edit game data, common events. The anomaly spawner. We need to take a look at that. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes, I need to add more sheets. So when it's equal to 355, it'll spawn. When it's equal to three, whoops, 50, it will spawn something. And I need to just copy and paste this sheet over and over again, right? There's probably a more elegant way of doing it. 50, 345. 340. 335. 330. 325. That's gonna kill a player. <clears throat> having to go through all that let's play test now that we've done that we've only have we only have five anomalies though so it's fine all right we got like five seconds of chill out time oh there's our first one it's the extra object anomaly and we have addressed it it will not come back uh we've got another one in the house somewhere there it is it's the intruder anomaly fix it we've got another one what could it be what could it be? What could it be? It's this one. Uh, uh, uh. You know, I said moving object, but it didn't move. Weird. I'll have to address that too. That one's up. Painting screen anomaly. And the game has frozen. <clears throat> Game's frozen on me. We have a bug. But first. But first, we have a successful, maybe successful playtest. We have a we have something that works. We have something that actually does work. So it needs tweaking. I've got a bug that looks that, that needs addressed. Just one so far. I still have more to do. I have to categorize these events such that it's not only type of event but also what room you're in because both of those things are very important I don't just want the player to be able to spam the button for that type of anomaly and all of that type of anomaly in the house gets neutralized or mitigated I want them to be in the correct room when it happens as we ace the play testing and get rid of bugs we will take that timer and stretch it out so they're not spawning every five seconds. But right now the five second rule is like really helpful for me because frequent fast spawning means fast prototyping and hopefully fast bug squishing, which we will address in the next episode. For now, I'm super happy that I got this far. I actually have a playable thing, except for the bug. Everything else works, except for the bug. So we'll get back to it uh, 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 another time very, very soon, possibly tomorrow. I don't know yet, uh, but I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you tomorrow. So, bye for now, and thank you so much for watching. Said that out of order? It's okay. Bye for now.